G'day everyone and welcome to episode 27 of the Pressure Point podcast. I'm joined as always with my co-host Quinn DeLuca. How are you mate? Good mate, good, good as per usual. I will tell you what, I think I jinxed us the other day when I said the weather's been kind to us. It's turned to shit today. But... Oh, it's a shocker today, isn't it? Absolute shocker. Yeah, it's, a, it's not great. But you feel, coming off the Tigers win last that's, night. So that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, how are you feeling after last night? Oh, pretty ecstatic, to be yeah. honest. I haven't seen us like that all year, so it's good. I yeah. think we might be back, but I won't touch wood just yet. <laughs> I will touch wood, sorry. I will touch wood. It's kind of wood, mate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, we've got a, uh, we've got a big episode today. we are uh, got a very special guest. Uh, we've got former Gold Coast Suns player and, and former beater boy, more importantly, Tom Nichols. Yeah. How are you, mate? That's the number one. Yeah, good. Good, lad. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I mentioned earlier, I've noticed a couple of ISO trends. Scotty, you've got the vanilla top and <laughs> we've got a couple of Maui's down here. So hopefully people are listening <laughs> on Spotify and not on the video. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, mate, it's all happening. We are, yeah, well and truly into Melbourne lockdown. It's uh, it's crazy times, but it is good. And then the blonde's going to go very soon, that's for sure. So, um, but no, it's great to have you on, Tommy. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll we'll take it right back from the start to your to your early footy days and um, yeah, your junior footy and um, your experiences, you know, going through the ranks there. So we'll, we'll take it right back and um, yeah, give us a rundown of your, your early footy days. Winding the clock back, geez, it's a, it's a yeah. while now. We're getting old, aren't we, mate? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, my footy day started when I was about 11, I reckon. So I grew up in country Victoria in a little town called Yarrawonga and um, sports, obviously, Matthew back there. But um, tennis was sort of my first love. So I played that um, as, a, as a little fella. And then, yeah, when I moved to Melbourne, um, all, the, all, the, all my mates in sort of grade five and six played footy. So I started when I was about, yeah, 11 or 12. Um, was obviously, yeah, always just a hundred centimetres taller than everyone else. So, um, was pretty lucky in that regard and, um, yeah, got a look in at, um, a lot of sort of rep teams and stuff early on. Um, but yeah, just sort of fell in love with the, the team aspect of footy and, uh, the camaraderie around it. And yeah, it's obviously a massive, it was a bit of a, a social vehicle as well. Like if you seem to be playing team sports and, um, yeah, doing all that stuff together, it, it kind of involves you in the group and, with people who you grew up with. So, um, yeah, obviously, yeah, really enjoyed my time early doors. As you mentioned, mate, beat a boy um, through and through, although I left and, and ditched you guys for scabs in, in year 11. But, geez, I reckon those two those two school football teams going head-to-head would uh, would be pretty good. We had a pretty good beta team sort of early on in those year seven, eight, nine years, didn't we? Hey, that's what I was going to say, mate. I think it was a... Uh, was it- a flag every year from year seven to ten, I think we, uh, or at least made the grand final every, each of those years. It was uh, a pretty scary team we had, didn't we? Yeah, I reckon we. Yeah, it was seven and eight. We definitely won. Yeah, and then I reckon we year nine we got tipped. Um, and there were a few funny stories. Like I think year eight, Troy Brody kicked that goal after the siren. That's right. Um, down at Mentone, which like was controversial in itself because the Burners boys reckoned he took the mark like half a second <laughs> after the siren, which. I can probably say now, I probably agree with. Um, <laughs> and then we had the we had the head count as well. Do you remember that? That's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we we'll, we'll down by like, I reckon we are losing by about five goals or four goals in the last quarter. Someone's called a head count and those Bernard dogs, um, we're called yeah. mates with a few of them still, uh, cheat, were cheaters, um, had about 19 on the field. So we had a replay and we won that easily. So That's yeah, right. very, very memorable early footy career at school. And you, I often you, actually... The, Sorry, the biggest memory. Yeah. I mean, you, what colour were your boots, mate? Oh, here we go. My <laughs> colour, colour of yeah. my boots. Oh, I can't. I don't Where know, mate. What were they? I reckon you Sorry. had some like silver, yeah, chrome <laughs> things, like. Yeah, probably I, did. I remember that vividly. You like your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna be. Pre- you're gonna think you're pretty good to wear boots like that, Marcus. I didn't know uh, this about you. <laughs> yeah, mate, I probably thought I was better than I was. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> no, anyway, anyway, to much. stand out with all the other superstars that we had in the team. <laughs> uh, even now, Darcy now, Holden me- and Shield pulled it off. Yeah, well, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, you know, we had uh, obviously Dylan Shield is is doing good things at Essendon at the moment. Here, I think I remember one day he had kicked five and had about thirty five touches just in the midfield. He was doing that most weeks actually. So. We had a pretty crazy team and it was, uh, yeah, really, really good memories there. And uh, I'm 
completely forgotten about those boots. So thanks for bringing those up. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> no dramas. <laughs> um, now, now, Tommy, Tommy, I've got to ask you quickly. You, you said you moved on to, to Skevs um, from St. Bede's. Was, was d -Law ever on the trade table for you? Did they ever put out an offer for you to go across to d -Law? I have to ask as a d -Law boy. If you ever boy. Um, <laughs> mate, they did. Um, I answered the phone, <laughs> said, who's this? said d -la and dial tone straight away. <laughs> no, no, obviously not. No, no, it was, um, yeah, I don't, this, uh, you'll call bullshit on this, but um, yeah, it was the, the move was, was all centered around um, sort of furthering my education and Skevs was kind of seen as like the, a, a somewhat high achieving <coughs> school academically as, as Beads was. Um, so yeah, that was sort of the reasoning for it. Yeah, you're right. I, you're right. I do, I do call bullshit on that. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut that out of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, well, we'll move on to, to late high school and, um, you know, getting picked up by the Suns. And I think you, you was, were you doing year 12 up there as well? Was that uh, around that time, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So as I mentioned, I went to, I did year 11 at Skez. <clears throat> um, yeah. And then, yeah, I was lucky enough as a um, sort of priority or a uh, 17 year old to be picked by the Suns. And um, we had the option of sort of, yeah, staying down in Melbourne because we were in the VFL that first year when, when we got sort of drafted, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, finished year 12 up on the Gold Coast. And, yeah, that was a, that was a great year up there. Um, went to a co ed school for the first time, which was, yeah, which was good fun. Um, and, yeah, somehow got into uni. And, yeah, here we are 10 years later. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, that would have been yeah crazy times, especially being in year twelve and, and doing that big move as well. It would have been uh, would have been uh, all happening for you. But um, take us back to your to your debut. Do you, how how well do you remember it? And who was it against? And you know what what's your what's your biggest memory from your from your debut? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, pretty special actually. I remember I remember the week before where I feel like I should have got a game, um, and then sort of chuck with chuck with shits and. Um, everything else went because I got called into to Bluey's office, right, and um, had had a pretty good game um, that week. I think the ruckmen that we had in weren't doing too well, um, and the boys were sort of pumping me up and like, "Well, oh, mate, you're close, like surely this week." So I go into the office and Bluey's like, "Oh, had a good game on the weekend, didn't you?" And I was like, "Oh, yeah, it was okay. You know, I can work on this thing, the average the average line you throw out." Um, and he's like, do you, "Do you think you should play this week?" And I was like. So I was like, yes, here we go. It's like, oh, yeah, I feel, feel I'm ready. Love an opportunity. And, <laughs> and then he goes, well, you're not. Um, so work on this, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just remember storming out into the locker room and, and whatever else. But, um, yeah, obviously, fast forward two weeks. Um, yeah, got the call up. Shane O'Bree delivered the message to me. Um, and then, yeah, called the parents. Um, and we played, who did we play? We played Adelaide over there um, at the old footy oval. Uh, and yeah, just remember sort of pre-game walking around the hotel, picking everyone's brains as to how they sort of dealt with nerves before their first game. Um, and yeah, it was just, yeah, great experience. Started on the bench, uh, which probably helped. Um, but yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, it's a good game. It was a few highlights. Gaz, Gaz put on a, another 40 disposal game and Trent McKenzie kicked a couple from 70, I reckon, but, um, yeah, unfortunately we lost, but yeah, the one thing I'll, I'll never forget is, we were coming close. I think we kicked like two or three in a row and then Adelaide kicked one back and I just remember went through the goals and then just jogging back to the centre circle. Just like this distorted noise in my ear from like the Adelaide 19th man as they call them. Just like screaming their heads off. It was a pretty surreal feeling, pretty cool feeling. Yeah, that would have been incredible. Can't even imagine what that would have been like now. I just have to ask this quickly as well, because being a Richmond supporter, there's been a lot of controversy about the guy this year. Is is Tom Lynch a good guy? Because everyone's talking a lot of shit about him this year. And I, I need to know. I need some clarification if he's a good guy or not. Mate, mate Lynch is one of the all-time greats. So it's, it's funny. I've kind of switched off from footy um, coming back this year and getting stuck into work. But whenever I see like his name up in in the headlines and all the clickbaiting headlines that go through it, it's, it's one thing that like gets me... Pretty pretty upset actually because um yeah like he's yeah couldn't speak higher of him. Oh, I got a few I got a few people I'm going to show this footage then because yeah a lot of people don't <laughs> yeah, think that do. at the moment. <laughs> please um, do. and that's you know, quite, that's the classic thing with with like footballers too right like you get white line fever 
he'd be an absolute C word to play against. But yeah, after the final siren, he's yeah legend. Yeah, as soon as you walk off the ground, a lot of people change. But um, mm. obviously we're all in lockdown in Melbourne, as you know, and people are bored trying to find things to do. And for some reason, I decided to put uh, AFL Evolution in the old PlayStation and play a bit of a career mode. And this is where I've actually got a bit of a beef with you. I, I was uh, undefeated the whole season until we came up against the Suns and your player kicked about three against me and won the game by about two goals. So I've got a bit of beef with you. I'm not happy with the <laughs> AFL Evolution play. Have you given oh. him a bit of fun? Do you, do you play? Is that it's surreal having a... PlayStation character? How good is that when you're, uh, your online character is better than you in real life? That's great. Um, I, I actually, yeah, I have played, played with him once. Um, yeah, I just remember, like, obviously never bought, I'm fairly into my video games, actually. Um, but yeah, never bought the game since like AFL Live 2005 when you could take hangers on no one standing there. Um, but yeah, I just remember I had like the pink boots, so I took a leaf out of Squatto's book. Um, and... <laughs> What else did I have? Oh, yeah. I reckon one game I like, I taped my wrists up. And I'm pretty sure, like, on that first game, I had wrist tape on my character. So, yeah, that's what I remember. <laughs> Unreal. Now, um, you know, we've spoken about it already. And you had the opportunity to live, well, most kids' dreams, I think, especially Australian kids' dreams. And that was to be interviewed on Toasted TV. Tell us what that experience was like. <laughs> <laughs> that's huge. That's right on. <laughs> Getting ready to give the old cliche spiel. Um, <laughs> how did that come about? That was yeah. That, so they came down and they didn't. Yeah, they did an episode. Um, yeah, I don't even know why they did it, but yeah, they we did like um, footy challenges and stuff. Um, and they actually like asked me to come on and co-host the next week. So um, yeah, I was stoked with that. But yeah, those lads were, were rippers. Um, but I think one of them's living in London now and doing like film production maybe over there. But um, yeah, that obviously evolved from what we'd remember as Cheese TV back in the day. So yeah, the best. Getting up at, yeah, getting up at 6.30 and watching um, Oz Aerobics with all the little ladies in their lycra. Um, <laughs> to learn the core exercises, of course. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah that, was, yeah, that was a pretty cool experience. You don't, you don't get a heap um, of opportunity like that up on the Gold Coast because obviously it's a bit of a smaller market. So to be able to do something like that was, yeah, was a lot of fun. Now, it was a funny episode too. I did give it a watch. I did my research before this. So I had to yeah. give it a watch. It. Hey, well, that, that was, you could tell it was in Queensland because those other blokes, especially the blonde haired dude, I don't remember his name, but he was awful. Yeah. yeah. He was a shocking yeah. kick. He was shocking kick in the footy. Poor bugger. I but, didn't help him much either with that technique, did I? Uh, no, well, he should have done practice before you got there. He knew yeah. what was coming. <laughs> agreed, agreed. Um, now, obviously, playing football in Queensland, a um, bit different to playing down here. You've probably got the warmer weather, um, the less media attention as, you know, NRL is probably the biggest sport there. What was it like? Was it, was it pretty cool playing footy, um, you know, when it didn't rain as much as it would here? And was it, what was that like? Yeah, I had a bit of a listen to your episode with Jack Sketcher, actually, and he touched on it with the waffle, didn't he? So, mm. um, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, up there, like, we, in terms of rain, like, if we ever had... Um, raining training sessions. Uh, we had a couple of like torrential rain games, but normally they'd be like in the summer, like in the preseason during the wet season. Um, and you'd yeah you'd go out to train at um, like eight o'clock to try and beat the heat, and then you just get this like massive downpour for like an hour. So yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. They were like they were pretty fun sessions. Uh, but in terms of yeah, in terms of like a footballing environment, I yeah totally convinced that Gold Coast is like the ideal ideal environment for those reasons you mentioned, like whether you, it takes five minutes to warm up, um, it's conducive to playing footy all year round, a bit, bit slippery. Um, and then, yeah, there's, it's, a, it's a bubble up there in terms of no media attention and scrutiny. So I felt you were able to switch off pretty easily. Um, so, yeah, it was, I can't compare it down to Melbourne because obviously never sort of ha like had that scrutiny and, and it was like, you'd go out to, cafes and, and get ripped on or read your name in the front page or whatever um but yeah in terms of that it was it's it's a pretty good pretty good place to, to play footy all right i think we uh we have to ask this and i'm sure all our listeners would love to know so what was it like playing with the great man gary ablett um you know on the field off the field give us a give us a rundown of of the man himself and uh yeah i will be the, the greatest player of all time yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Like again, super lucky to have had that opportunity. Um, another all-time great off the field, just 
such a generous, caring um, man he is. Um, quite religious, which is which is great for him. Works for him, and um, he takes all those values and um, yeah, epitomizes them. Um, yeah, you just remember like training. He'd always like it was like he just knew what was going to happen ten seconds before everyone else. But he'd he'd then go and spend the time to talk through what like how he processed the game to the younger midfielders. So yeah, my my memories of him were always just teaching the younger guys and spending a lot of time with him. Um, on the field, yeah, obviously, like, his highlights and everything speak for themselves. Um, I think he had his – he had a bit of a milestone game earlier in the year, and uh, one of the guys um, mentioned for work uh, – from work mentioned I appeared on one of the highlights, and it was, yeah, horrendous highlight. He just – guys just pinpointed me out, and I wasn't even expecting the ball to come, and he found me inside 50 and hit me on the chest. So that kind of speaks volumes to, to what he did. But, uh, yeah, a couple of the games – um, I think against Collingwood, um, he had like four and like 30 odd, won the game off his own boot and did that a number of times. And I just remember just like looking at like Rory Thompson or whoever it was and being like, is this guy for real? Like give us, <laughs> give us some spotlight, mate. But no, nah, he was, yeah, obviously, yeah, obviously his accolades speak for themselves. Yeah. Couldn't imagine. I mean, he's, uh, yeah, you see him now, he's what, 35, 36, he's still playing good footy and, um, yeah, just, we're pretty privileged to, to still be watching Gary Ablett run around as well and uh, it'd be good to see him win the flag at the end of the year as well for the Cats if that happens so um, mm. but, but you, well it would have to be a good footy <laughs> story I know, I know you want to see the Titus <laughs> win Queen but it would be a great footy story <laughs> um, it would it would it would yeah you, so you touched on playing up in Queensland before and you know the warmer weather and, and the lifestyle up there but did you ever consider coming home at any stage and, and coming to a Victorian club or did you get any interest in, in regards to that? Or did you, were you happy just staying up there for, for most of your career? Yeah, I was, whenever sort of contract time came around, which is kind of every two years, um, the manager had asked the question, but I'd always be hell bent on staying and, and trying to build something from the ground up, which I was lucky enough to be a part of. Um, I suppose it was probably not until, well, pretty much till last year when, um, which he was obviously captain and playing really good footy that I thought about moving elsewhere. Um, and there was a little bit of interest there. There was, yeah, there was always questions asked earlier on in my career from other clubs, from, from Vic and New South and um, and that. But um, yeah, I was actually yeah thinking heavily about potentially making a move sort of like for this year for 2020. But um, yeah, as it sort of, as the, like the off season and trade week panned out, I just, yeah, realised that, I was ready for the next step in life and um, footy wasn't my passion anymore. So not, yeah, I didn't really think about moving back home or anything like that until, yeah, later on in my career. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. So that leads me on to the, the next question. Like, what, what is the plan now going forward with, uh, with life? And, you know, you, you said you, you've lost your passion for footy a bit. So I'm guessing those footy days are done then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, had, had a few ammo clubs ring up and... Um, try and twist the arm but no nah, yeah as I said um, really happy to move on to the next phase of my life which is um, in the finance world in investment banking so yeah I was again really lucky to to um, finish my commerce degree up there while I was playing um, the uni we went to was super super helpful to us our absolute legends um, really flexible with all our exams and everything like that so um, yeah I did the uni uh, the commerce degree came down to Melbourne and um, just met with a bunch of sort of um, yeah, um, accounting firms and um, investment banks and bulge brackets and stuff like that. And yeah, I was lucky enough, I think as I was mentioning earlier, to to land a gig sort of end of Feb. Um, and since then, I've just, yeah, been getting my teeth stuck into that. So I'm in the, uh, what's called the equity capital markets team um, at, at Henslow. Uh, just give them a little plug. But, so that probably means nothing to, to anyone out there. But um, yeah, really enjoying that. And um, yeah, just trying to learn as much as I can because, yeah, it's, a, it's a quite a transition going from school uh, into footy for ten for another ten years. So you you're somewhat institutionalised, but um, yeah, working in, in the finance world is yeah something I'm really enjoying. I love it, mate. That's great. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all we've got got for today, mate. It's uh it's been an absolute pleasure to to have you on the pod. It's um, you know greatly appreciated and. 
we've had a great yarn and um, you know bringing up my footy boots is is uh, something that took me off guard but um, <laughs> but we love it but yeah. <laughs> no but no we yeah, really appreciate you want. just give the fans what they want mate <laughs> that's it that's it I'm sure I'm going to cop a bit of stick for that now but that's all right <laughs> um, but no mate we uh, we really appreciate you coming on uh, it's uh, it's been a pleasure and I'm sure the listeners are going to get a lot out of this and a um, bit of insight into the Suns and, and yourself. So um, thanks a lot, mate, and we'll uh, hopefully chat to you soon. No dramas, lads. Yeah, appreciate you having me on. And I'll, let, I'll talk to some of um, maybe the Richmond boys for you, Quinn, but uh, no promises. But, yeah, obviously love what you're doing in, in ISO and you've got to do something outside of it. So I'll, I'll see if I can drag one of them on. But, um, yeah, all the best with it and, yeah, love what you've done so far. Well, I won't hold you to it, but I do really appreciate that. So thanks for <laughs> <laughs> You've got me on record now, don't you? I've got to go. That's it. You can't take the word back now. I've got you. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Cheers, Sonny. Thanks, appreciate it, mate. Pressure point. 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 Pressure point.